What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Levels, the only talk show where we laugh about other people getting punched in the face because we love it so damn much. My name is Jeremy Long, and I'm joined always by the sports Nisa, Cassandra Cousineau. Cece, what you over there munching on, girl? Man, I, look, I always come here hungry, so today I brought some hungry. vittles, actually some vegetarian well, what, what and vegan pizza. Veg- well, I didn't go vegan. I went vegetarian. Vegetarian. Yeah. Vegetarian pizza. Where did you get the vegetarian pizza from? So it's uh, Pizza 108, I, I believe it is. Look, don't get me lying. It's Pizza 108. And it's your fault, actually. It's because, my fault. Yeah, you tagged me in something today on Libel. Facebook about a vegan and vegetarian pizzeria. And I was like, hmm. And they happened to be close by downtown. Talked to uh, Chris, who made sure that it got over here to the studio hot. And I got this sausage, uh, vegetarian sausage if it's, if thing. If it's vegetarian, then it's not. Uh, Kwan, did you try it? It's you got to try it now. I it's will good. try it if you turn your headphone the right way. Oh, snap. <laughs> you know what? This is what happens when you walk around life hungry. That's what happens. Yeah. We, we uh, all that vegetarian, life. whatever. So Quan's going to try this. I already Yeah, you already eat it. So, so it I guess you like it because there ain't nothing left. I love there. it. It's good. It's, What's Quan think? It's like seasoned. The crust is nice. And got real cheese on it. It tastes good. It tastes the good. The flavor is good. There's seasoning on it? It's seasoned. It's seasoned. <laughs> it's seasoned. Okay. It's actually highly seasoned fake sausage because I think they have to. Highly seasoned fake sausage. It's beef. (laughs) Feet, like fake meat. It's feet? Mm -hmm, Fake meat. Oh, oh, okay, fake meat. I don't think they should advertise like that. Mm -mm. We use only the freshest feet. Listen, uh, Pizza 108, like, I'm going to order this again. Okay. Uh, I guess I'm going to try it here in just a minute. Uh, We have a good show lined up for you guys. UFC fighter Brock Weaver is going to join us in just a little bit. Uh, we're going to take you through the news and notes of mixed martial arts and boxing, what's happening in their world. And also, we are going to start the beginning of CC's education when it comes to professional wrestling. And this is the perfect background music to have uh, uh, with that. So yeah. we're going to play a little bit. We're going to play Guess That Wrestler's Name Slash Gimmick. So Wrestler. we're going to explain all that stuff to her because we're going to start because <laughs> she doesn't want to do this. It's now my favorite thing to do. Uh, so first off, Mossberg Injury Lawyers, thank you guys so much for supporting the show. They are our sponsor from from accidents and injuries, workers' comp, even wrongful death. Mossberg Injury Lawyers are the go-to team here in Nevada. They've been voted on it many, many times over. They are the best team here in the state. Call 702-222-4555. 702-222-4555. And might need some injury lawyers because if this pizza is any good, I'm going to chunk it right at your head. No, it's delicious. In fact, I'm still eating it. <laughs> okay, she's still over there eating it, so I'll kick us off here. Uh, Terrence Crawford, Terrence mm-hmm. Bud Crawford, Errol Spence, the one who has been ejected from his car recently. Uh, they keep jawing at each other online. Uh, keep going back and forth saying, hey, let's get the fight made. No, we're not getting the fight made. I'm ducking you or you're ducking me. I'm not ducking you. Kind of this Twitter war. Are we going to see yeah. this fight? When are we going to see this fight? I think we're going to see it. Mm. Um, late. I mean, it'll be late this year, but I think we're going to yeah. see it. So in the back and forth Twitter I, feud that they were having, Terrence Crawford started it. And he basically <laughs> came out like throwing all the F-bombs and saying, don't blame it on your promoter. Uh, we can get this done. I never ducked anybody. And then Spence in, 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 inserted himself into the conversation, and he said, "Okay, it doesn't get done like this. You don't make fights on Twitter. So Crawford said, bet, I'm calling you right now. So he did. He called him up, and he actually said that they spoke, and they agreed that the fight, they're going to make the fight happen. So now we'll see okay. you know, when it's going to happen and uh, the condition. I expect them to want some kind of tune-up for Arrow more so than uh, Crawford. Got to see what he has. Do you think that'll be this year? I think the tune-up is going to happen this year. Here's the if pizza. All right, let's see. Pizza 108. Like these carnivores over here like doubting the, the vegetarian sausage, but I just I think that it is delicious. Yeah, you know, it's a very interesting, um, number one, a great fight to make. You need mm-hmm. that fight um, for the division, for the sport. Okay, the pizza's not bad. It's, it's not bad. It's not bad. Chris, vegetarian. Look. 
vegetarian sausage pizza from Pizza 108. Chris Not and bad. them downtown Pizza 108. They're off of Highland. Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. He's right. I'm going to have that pizza again. Yeah. Yeah. That, they got at least, like, them talking about making the fight right. is almost as good as him saying that mm. they made the fight. Yeah. And a bad blood fight is mm-hmm. always better, right? Yep. That's what uh, the public likes is they like a little yeah. bit of bad blood. But it's to be expected. You're talking about two of the very best in their weight class. And this is a legacy fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, these, so. these are legacy fights. Over when you're, you're talking about the top guys in these yep. divisions going after each other and they know that yeah they know that so there's a lot of jostling a lot of back and forth between uh these two uh young cats and you gotta think at some point spence is gonna move up so this fight needs to happen sooner rather than later before Mm -hmm. that actually occurs so yeah but i you know i don't know if you noticed crawford in his twitter game coming into 2020 uh, but he turned up the heat a little bit. And Did he hire somebody? It. No, it's him. It's definitely him. him. Yeah, you read it. It's definitely him. Okay. Um, like little things from like showing his son how to build a makeshift basketball hoop out of a clothes hanger and a plastic bag and some socks. <laughs> <laughs> right. Things like that, you know, to clapping back and trying to get a fight made. And so mm. uh, I'm here for it. Yeah, I like it, man. I, I like this. and just And I like this next thing. Josh Taylor signs a uh, long-term contract. What top rank? What are are you hearing from uh, Josh Taylor? Dude, so check this out. Tyson Fury, um, Teofimo Lopez, Terrence Crawford, Shakur Stevenson, Better Beta, Loma, Carl Frampton, Oscar Valdez, Burchelt, Navarrete. That top rank stable Mm -hmm. is stacked with champions man and now to add this guy to that to add josh taylor who comes off of that big win for from um the championship series with pro ray i i mean i love it you know that wss look at the the past what five fighters that have, have won it uh you have usk mm-hmm. i keep saying Usk. you know music music uh callum smith anyway and now josh taylor wow. so that that tournament has had some financial and logistical issues mm-hmm. but it has produced real stars it absolutely stars. has so and josh no, taylor i, I mean uh, a guy in, a, in an area that's kind of underserved as far as yeah. boxing but still very popular scottish mm-hmm. another european fighter coming yep. over there and I, I think he lives and uh, trains out of uh, the uk now yeah so another uk mm-hmm. fighter it's kind of the boxing world's kind of shifted a little yeah bit. it was going back mm-hmm. right i mean because the uk was so dominant and it always has it's always had a huge bo- presence on the boxing right. landscape and um now the champions are coming back absolutely and i think that this is aram's plan to actually have more of an international presence for top rank promotion and not rely so heavily on the u.s born boxers and, and I think there's a double-edged sword to that because when you're selling these fights in the U.S., you got to have American-born champions. Yeah. Tyson Fury, another one, you know. Um, although he's he's making his claim in most, Las most Vegas. People, most mm-hmm. people in the United States are like, hey, you got to talk money. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say the extra yeah, use in your words. Money. Yeah, no, right. <laughs> they didn't play things like clotted cream. Uh, but, I mean, Josh Taylor, 16-0, and 0, mm-hmm. rising star. Mm-hmm. Like you said, top rank is, I mean, they are stacked. Yeah. They are deep, however you want to describe that. I mean, they're they're doing some some big things over there. So. I like it. Uh, Shakir Stevenson, speaking yeah. of big things. Mm-hmm. He's aiming for one more fight before uh, his May showdown yeah. in uh, with Josh Warrington. Wow. Wow. One more, one more tune-up, man? I don't know. Wah. But, I mean, it would be, I mean, I'm sure it's going to be a fight, a very easy fight for him. He wants to fight in March. Uh, another tune-up fight at this point seems. Right, Josh. But man. what? I mean, but what? <laughs> March, if, but what if you get if something no happens? Way. Say a Tyson Fury, you get a deep cut. Something happens to you. Now you've. And he turns out to be Andy Ruiz. Now you're jeopardizing this huge fight, this huge payday mm-hmm. with Josh Warrington right. for some fight with some other guy. Does what does that tell you about the fighter? Is he? Maybe not feeling it yet. Is he being rushed yeah. a little bit? or I don't think he's being rushed. I think what it is is that they're trying to build some more name value recognition for Sugar Stevenson, which is strange. He's an Olympian, silver yeah. medalist. He was like one of the biggest stars that come out of that group, along with Caressa Shields, although mm-hmm. she had been there yeah. previously. Look, just take him on a press tour, dang. 
Yeah. <laughs> Take more press tour, but which they're not doing for Fury and Wilder, but by the way, but yeah, it's it's a strange thing to have a tune up for Shiko Stevenson at this yeah. point. Take take these guys around, man. Uh, you know, I mean, I guess you need better publicists or something. I guess, you, or you hey, get them busy on social media. Get them busy cheaper. on social media. I you want know. to support some of these. Stuff and it doesn't them. have to be, <laughs> it doesn't have to be all you know everything that like Crawford's doing right. uh, and running your mouth that way. It, it can be other stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can you can have yeah. a Twitch channel. Yeah. You like if your fighter mm-hmm. likes video games, they can do that. Yeah. If they like if they. I mean, WWE loves boxers. Man. If they like that kind of stuff. They can get involved there, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's so many different avenues. And I think, yes, it's the promoter's job to get these guys fights and everything. So you got to have that other people, those right kind of managers in there that are going to get your guys relevant uh, exposure to start building that base. Otherwise, again, you're taking taking unnecessary risks at this point. Mm -hmm. The way I see it. I'd like to see him, though. Why is that? No, I'd like to see Shakur Stevenson uh, back in the ring again. So I think every time he's fighting, he looks better. He is improving. He's starting to get his grown man body, uh, even though he got that baby face. <laughs> he does. Still going on. Baby face. Yeah. Uh, the great George St. Pierre, he is leaning McGregor over Cowboy Cerrone in their upcoming clash here in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. But he kind of did the political thing, too. He was like, hey, if it's a short fight and they stay on their feet, I'm going with McGregor. Yeah. But if it gets, you know, later into the fight and he gets drug down to the ground, I'm going with Cerrone. Yeah. So he gave us an answer without giving us an answer, but he still kind of said at the end, yeah, I'm leaning McGregor. I think McGregor's yeah. going to pull it out. He pulled the old, one of these guys is going to win the fight. <laughs> <laughs> so that is what Well, thank you, GSB, <laughs> for that wonderful <laughs> insight there. And now back to you, Bob, in studio. No, I mean, it's just yeah, funny. It's funny, but, I mean, he's getting his own calls out. Yeah. You know, uh, Jorge. Uh, Masvidal is calling out GSP. He said, I, I thought it was a great quote. He, uh, he'd he like to resurrect GSP yeah. and then retire him retire again. Him, yeah. Listen, uh, Street Jesus ain't about these belts. <laughs> Street he's, Jesus he's is going, about hey, these Benjamins. Money fights. Uh, money fights. And that's has been his whole mentality. Yeah. From backyards. And that's just all he did. Yeah, and absolutely. So that's what he's about. He, he don't really care about who got a strap. He, nope. Uh, because the belts, to him, he's like, hey, I can't pay my bills yeah, with right. belts. He's and right. it's funny because he's doing the Chelsonen thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, he's going that way. And his his talks and constant call-outs and everything else yeah. are earning him championship fights. Yeah, at least broke. being in the conversation of championship fights because. If it ain't broke, if man. If it ain't broke, man. Kinda get on real. Twitter and holler at people. <laughs> you know what? What? I, I might start doing that. <laughs> Just start hollering at people. Start Be like the Shmo and start antagonizing start. Ariel Hawani. Oh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see if we can't get a, uh, a charity fight lined up between you and like Amber Dixon oh, or man. something. Man, I like That'd Amber. Be fun. I want to fight Amber. Oh, no, it's charity. That's, it, that's all it is. So, anyway. Yeah, I see people want to fight, guess. <laughs> we, got our, we got a guest on the line here, uh, UFC fighter Brock Weaver. Brock, how you doing this evening? Man, I'm good, man. Just, uh... Got up, just got done training, eating my last meal of the night, and, uh, you know, just let to chill out. Oh, Get there you sleep. go. <laughs> right. We're having <laughs> pizza here, but, uh, vegan sausage pizza, uh, uh, to be exact. What are you eating? Because it sounds good, whatever. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm actually eating uh, some, uh, one of the meals from my meal prep place, Clean Eats Mobile. It's uh, barbecue chicken. Uh, some potatoes, some peppers, onions, all that stuff. It's uh, it's daily, daily meal prep for me, and I get my pick up my meals uh twice a week, put them in the freezer, throw them in the microwave three minutes, and uh, you know, get this weight off of me. I go back down to fifty five. I can't be a fat boy at seventy this time. <laughs> you going back down? To, all week. You going back down to to fifty five? Where you at right now? Oh, man, I don't even want to tell you. <laughs> yeah. I got it, I'm a man. Someplace, boy, man. someplace but north of one. I, I, would, I would say, you know, I, I'm not in my 70s yet. I'm in, I'm, I'm in the low 80s, but uh, I'm on, you know. You're on man. your way, man. You're on your way. You got this I'm, down. I'm on my way. Yeah. 
I'm on my way. I really just started this week, so yeah, right. oh, ain't that bad. Yeah, you're not that bad. Well, for for those I don't who start cutting weight till they announce the fight. That's oh, yeah, there you doing. go. See, that's when it's serious. That's what. <laughs> that's yeah. For those who may not I know you, I ain't stopping eating. I ain't. They're gonna stop eating pizza for nobody until I see a opponent on a card, a name, and it's official. Until that contract is signed, I ain't giving up pizza either, brother. No. I'm with you, man. For for the guys, uh, people who may not know fans of the UFC who may not know you yet, give us a little bit of background, man. When did you start training? What got you into the sport? And, you know, can, give us a little bit of back, background on you. Um, I started training in May about 15 years old. I think I was a sophomore. I was a sophomore in high school. Um, there, there, uh, My cousin, James Orso, he fought uh, – he was a pro fighter, him and his brother, Chuck. They uh they never even did amateur MMA. They they went to pro somehow they went to pro. I don't even know still how they did this. They fought a couple of tough man competitions and fought got into pro MMA and pro boxing right off the rip without even like any amateurs and they were pretty known around here, you know, and they were like the first uh Moas fighting around here and James actually went and fought Danny our body that come off the ultimate fighter. He fought him twice, not couple of his teeth out back in the day on the uh, pay-per-view car where Bob sat and Bobby actually headlined it in Mississippi. Mm. And, uh, I mean, that was just kind of like, those are kind of the guys. And I was at the gym one night, and uh, the James, one of the, the pro fighters that fought down everybody, we call him Big O. He, uh, he was in the gym, and I was lifting weights. Man, I had arms about the size of a, a broomstick and he was like look man you you need to you need to start learning you need to stop lifting weights you need to uh learn how to fight because uh you're, you're not getting any bigger and i've seen you in here in like the last four weeks i was like oh dang i don't know if i'm gonna take that as an insult you know i really didn't but he's like here throw these gloves on and he held me up for me a couple because I, I think he was bored and needed a training partner and i was like 15 years old he just needed somebody to move around with me showed me a couple of trains with an arm bars and I was like, oh, man, that's pretty tight. And I went home and that same night that he showed me that I went home and as I walked in the house, my grandpa was watching uh, Chuck Liddell versus Tito. And I was like, dang, I just learned something and then now this is on and then I started watching and I was like, man, that's pretty cool. And then I went and bought the game, uh, the first UFC in the stupid game and me and my friends started flipping our trampolines upside down in the yard, turning it on with octagon, going to school, promoting fights. Every, we would promote every Friday. We'd call out somebody in the bleachers, and we'd promote it all around school. And be like me and so and so fighting this this Saturday backyard brawls, you know. And we'd oh, go. Wait a minute, in high school? Meet up. <laughs> yeah, in high school, and we'd meet up at my friend's house, flip his trampoline upside down. We would do box shots uh, from the neck down and, and submissions in no time limit. And we would. I had like three or four of those, and I was uh I learned there that uh you know I I liked it. I was picking up to the submissions quick. The trying was the arm bars, but my my background was in boxing. I did some boxing when I was twelve for about six months with my uncle. He was a nine and zero pro boxer, and he he actually fought Roy Jones Jr. six times. They went three and three in their amateur career, and uh, he had some head problems, and he ended up retiring and becoming a cop around here. So I had a natural they. People always told me I was naturally good. Uh, I had a good eye for uh, boxing. I could see things. I had like a, a that, that fast twitch in and out naturally. But on the streets, I would fight everybody, all my friends, and it was like all my friends freaking hit puberty before I did or something. I don't know what was going on right here. I was I was the smallest one around here, and everybody was for some reason wanted to call me out right when I started training, and everybody would take me down and beat me up. And, I was like, man, I gotta get more serious. And then I'm a local gym around here in Storm, and my my cousins they stopped fighting, they retired, and got jobs. And I, I moved to, uh, I went to this other gym, Team Storm, like I said. And I, I trained with them for about four or five years. Had about eight or nine amateur fights with them. Went up and down. Uh, had my first, had my first fight at just turning 17. I told my grandma that I was good. I was going to my cousin's house and uh, to stay a night, and I slipped off and got another one of my cousins fake ID and uh said I was nineteen and went into guitars and Cadillacs, which is a bar in Mississippi and uh had my first amateur fight and my second amateur fight until they caught up with me and found that it wasn't me. But I lost my first two amateurs and then uh How old were the people you that. fought in that uh in those first couple of fights? 
the first guy was Jeremy Pettit. He was 32 years old. And I was I was just turned 17. Like maybe I was like a week old. <laughs> And uh, we, we, I lost to him split decision. It was a war. People still, like, people still in the Mississippi area see me like, man, I remember when you fought Jeremy Pettit and he was a little freaking kid. You had, you looked like, a, you. I was 17, but I looked like I was 13. It's like, we don't even know how they let you in there, but they let you in there and you freaking went balls to the wall, all out war. And, and it was bloody and it was crazy. I mean, elbows were still allowed in amateur back when I fought this guy and, and we wow. could do north south elbows. Oh, so he like wow. mounted me one time and like north south me about twenty of them and the ref didn't stop it. I was, now I was who, like, man, I hope the ref stops it. Who were the judges? Like what are the certification of these kind of, of these judges? You said it was a split decision. Was it just yeah. the guys who came around the bar most often? No, it was it was an organization, FFI. Oh, okay. Uh Fight Force International. They actually they got pretty big. They had they had that Bobby Lashley and uh, Bob Sapcard on the uh, pay per view, Blood okay. and Sand. Mm, yeah. They um, they were they were pretty, they were they were the biggest organization around here at the time until uh, Allen fights come around in Florida and with Roy and all them. You know. Was that, in your opinion, was that your kind of welcome to MMA? I I want to do this crap for a living, <laughs> you know, moment, or 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 did that come later? Um. Uh, I was actually, I was like, when I walked out, I walked out first. And I always like to walk out first, but I didn't learn that until later in my career. Mm. Now I like to walk out first. But when I walked out, I was so crunk in my song. I think I'll come out to, um, I don't listen to rap anymore, but I think I'll come out to, uh, I ain't never scared. And I come out all crunk and Bone I was pressure. Like feeling my stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. I was hyped. I jumped in there and I was circling around. And I was like, yeah, and I love the lights. And as soon as my song went off and his song came on, he came out with like a little Spartan like outfit on with like all his Spartan people behind him. They come out marching. I'm like, what the freak, man? I'm about to I'm about to get killed by this. <laughs> this Spartan tat, dude had tats on his yeah, this dude had tats on his face and everywhere. And I had no tattoos. I was 17. I think I had like my initials on my chest, man. I'm just looking at my little bird chest. I'm like, what have I done got myself into? My grandpa was there, my uncle was there, and a couple of my friends. I was just wanting to say, hey, man, I don't even do this. But I got so, <laughs> I remember being so scared in there, man. I was so scared. And when the bell rung, I was like, I don't even know how I lifted my arms up to punch him. But as soon as he come in, he hit me like the first three seconds of overhand right, and I ate it. And I was like, oh, it ain't that bad. And it was, it was, it was on, it was on after that. But then. I come in and fought again, and I got triangle in like 30 seconds, a couple okay. months after that. And then I took a took like an eight month break and was really thinking about quitting, but just like because man, you I can't lost quit or I, because you of any injuries that you sustained. Oh, uh, just because I lost twice, and then all my friends were like, "Man, you know they they didn't really believe in me then." They were like, "Man, look, maybe fighting here for you, you know, so you could like basketball or something." <laughs> and I was like. Uh, nah, I'm way too short for that, but, uh, I was basically just like, I got a win-win, you know, and then they sent me in there with this dude named, uh, Rudy Flores, and he still fights to this day, he's a Mexican guy, he's got like 10 kids, tough as nails, still don't speak good English, but he's freaking has heart out this world, and, uh, I fought him, and I broke both my hands in that fight, and he kept coming like the Terminator, and I just outboxed him, like, but I broke both my hands, both my hands were folding up, like, a baseball glove after man and um after i felt that win getting my hand raised you know i was like man i don't know what i was thinking about quentin but this is the best high feeling drunk a bottle of vodka can't get you feeling like this i gotta feel like this more you know and then my like i said my entry career went up and down i went two or three more times lost two and then i caught a, i went like three or four different belts in amateur and different organizations you know and then i started people around here started believing in me my tribe started believing in me. my name started getting out there and then it, it just it, it is just you know they, they're looking at me now to, to, to i'm the i'm the child of tushka the one that's gonna bring Right. Bring us out of this uh this, this great famine that we're in. This, this uh you know get us get us recognized, get our name around the world, and uh you know and, and just represent all the tribes and where I got a bigger I got a bigger uh following now, man. You know I'm I'm running hard for the Lord too, so um I couldn't do I could have done all this without him, and 
I, yeah, man, I just uh, that's when I realized that that first win is all it took. And you mentioned I your tribe. Never, uh, um, so you didn't grow up in suburban Iowa, right? Um, <laughs> you you grew up no. in a very small. <laughs> tell me about your your town in Alabama and um and the tribe that you come from. I grew up in a rinky dink trailer. I'm still in a rinky dink trailer right now in Alabama in the woods, and you can't even. You saw they gotta call me every time they come and get me to direct them in here. <laughs> wow. But What's the population? We ticket, man. Oh, in Macintosh, probably just a couple hundred, man. Like, do you have a street light? Street lights, yeah, we got some street lights. <laughs> uh, right. we, 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 no, 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 we ain't got no. Uh, what, what do you mean by street lights? Like, right. like red, no, I mean, yellow, and, no, and, I mean, well, I grew up in a small town, right? And we got a street light, like, somewhere like high school or something like that so i right. understand small towns i'm just trying to figure out how small your small town is that's all um so oh, you no, have... we ain't got no street lights even at our high school no no we ain't got no street lights like 20 30 miles and we the mall, the walmart north 50 miles north or 50 miles south yeah uh, what do you think about this uh, electricity and this indoor plumbing it's really <laughs> crazy right man we got uh <laughs> we we drink well we drink well water man that's that is. Ah, right okay. Yeah. My mama got well water. Yeah, hey, man. I'm, I'm, I'm saying this kind of country. I'm from East, East Texas. Yeah, I, I get, get it. it. I get it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, you mentioned in the beginning you didn't have a whole lot of support, and then later on people started believing in you. To to you as you know, as a fighter, as a guy growing up in this sport, doing the things you're doing, how important is that to have that kind of backing between, you know, with your tribe and your, just your friends and your family around you going, hey, you know what? We believe in this guy. We believe that you can do it and make it at the next level. Yeah, man. Um, my grandma, my grandma didn't believe in didn't believe in doing me until I got the contract. <laughs> She's like, "All right, maybe I'll start paying off." Right. <laughs> you owe me a lot of money, <laughs> but uh, we didn't believe me for one second until she always told me get a real job. You know, stop getting my eyeballs beat out. Right. But my friends, man. My my tribe's all about fighting. You know, growing up, uh, we go into the city to party. When we grew up anywhere, people, you know, uh, not being racist, anything racist, but white or uh, or any other race really didn't come around this uh, on the reservation because they were scared that anybody around here would just want to fight them. And I mean, it's true. Just uh, and you did. We had a bad <laughs> you, you kind yeah, of did. and we did. You know, it, <laughs> we you know, we kind of did. We we grew up. Uh, we we did a certain. Um, from like 14 to like 17, it's like you kind of got to get your street credit. So you got to kind of go out to downtown Mobile and on the weekends, you got to knock out somebody and you got to, you know, you got to show the boys about it, you know? So when they finally realized, you know, I started getting good at this and uh, taking this pretty serious and everybody was like, man, you know, um, Brock's really doing it. You know, let's uh, get behind him, man. And, And our boys, man, we're like a wolf pack, man. I got like 15 friends that we like, like brothers, man, we sleep in we slept in bed together, like just growing up, just like eating the same plate, drinking the same cup, like it's it's all like it's we no nope. when people realize who we are from around here, like man, I ain't never seen boys in like a clique, like so y'all not even brothers, but y'all look like brothers, y'all look alike, you know they they know when the Moab in the building because we have a certain look, and they know how close we really are so for me to be in them that ring and them to start screaming my name b rock b rock and you know and mo wild you know and all the times that i was in fights you know when i'm pinned down mounted or my back's took uh i can remember this one time and uh a couple fights ago uh at island fights it was uh maybe like four fights ago and i fought a black belt in jiu-jitsu and he took my belt, he took my back uh, early in the first round. And, I, you know, when you're put in this position, your mind tells you to, to, to just give up, you know. And he took my back, and I, he was about, he was trying to flat me out. And I just remember hearing, you know, be rock, be rock, be rock. And I was just like, that just gave me so much energy. Man, I stood up with this dude on my back, and I carried him across the ring and just, like, smiled at him, you know, and just talked to him. I said, as soon as you get off, you ain't going to choke me out. He didn't speak English good, but he knew what I was saying. He understood and what was going on when I, you were uh, carrying him across he knew the ring. Going on. <laughs> That's was, a universal you know, thing. Across the ring. <laughs> and as soon as he fell off, I hit him with a flurry, and I let him know what was up. And I picked him apart and battered him up the rest of the fight and smiled at him. And 
you know, a lot of people around here, you know, it's like, man, did, did, did we really get you up when we start saying your name? I'm like, yeah, man, because your mind's telling you to quit at that point. You know, he, he, he had to choke in, and I was flattened out almost. I was like, I don't even really know how I got up, man. It's just, y'all, y'all, y'all brought me up, man. And I remember in some fights, I'm just feeling, have no energy, and they just start screaming, Moa, B Rock, man. And it's just, it's all love. Like in the contender fight, I could only have one of them come out because the last time a lot of them stopped work. Gee. We were going to come out, and they, they didn't happen. Their jobs would let them off. So my boy G, uh, he come out, and I was just like, he come out. And when I come out through them doors, it was so quiet in there. And I knew that how quiet I was going to be in there. And it, I'm used to a really live crowd. So I knew already I premeditated I got to get myself hyped in this fight, you know. I got to I got to pump myself up, and, I gotta, and G's got to help me. We talked about it. So I come out, I was like, I'm going to find you. You know, you better be shouting. I come out, he wasn't, he, I heard him say, uh, that's my dog. And I was like, all right, where is he at? Gee, where you at? Where you at? I'm right here. I'm right here. I was like, hey, I'm coming. And we, we always do our little hand clap salute thing, man. It's just good luck. And, uh, you know, it's it's all love, man. And me and G, we grew up since we, since we were like two or three years old. He's been pursuing music, and I've been pursuing this, and we've been helping each other out. And, you know, it's finally starting to pay off. So let's talk about getting Grandma her money back. So you... Yeah. You, uh, it took you two tries to get the contender contract. The first time was canceled because Dana had an injury or something. Or not. No, it was um, Dana White looking for a fight, wasn't it? It was a different show. Yep. Yep. So yep. And then you finally made it to contender. You get the contract. You were set to fight in Florida in October, and it didn't happen. 12. So nope. what happened? So USADA is involved in this. So I guess, you know, you dropped some breadcrumbs and they found you. And they tested you. What what happened with the USADA testing that made them um, postpone your first your your first fight in UFC? Um, from what I understood is that my levels. They said it was that Friday. They told me they, they tested me August thirty first, and um, they didn't let me know that until like October the sixth, that Friday, or October the fifth, that Friday before weigh-ins and I got a call from a manager and uh, I was in training and I answered and he was like you know be honest man what have you took I'm like what do you do I was like oh man what do you mean what have I took They're like uh nothing uh basically I'm I kind of really don't take anything uh, I'll take like some joint joint medicine and um uh, coffee and some bangs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the bangs are pretty serious, but I didn't think they were that serious, you know? And, I'm, and then, but I thought about, it, uh, like a week before I got that, uh, test, I did like some shots in my mouth cause I had some root canals did, but you know, that's just dentist stuff to like numb your mouth. And uh, I'm just like running through my mind and, and I still, as I'm talking to him, not thinking that I'm not going to fight. And then right before I was falling, I'm like, all right, so, you know, they're going to run this test. And he's like, I'm like, they're going to clear it. And, and it's going to be all good. Right. And he was like, no, bro, you scratched off the card immediately. I'm like, what? I'm like, there's no, there's no way. Like, there's no way I'm not fighting this week. And he's like, yeah, bro. They're like, they, these, they're getting ready to send your test to Germany. It takes like two or three weeks to get back. He's like, this, this is serious. You're off the card. Cause they can't let you fight. Because you used your, your test testosterone level, level high. right? It was your testosterone level that was, was very high? Yeah, it was five, five, five and a half ratio of one, which is like normal, one and one, two and one's high or something. Mine was yeah. five and a half and one. Right. So I was like, you know, I'm just thinking, like, what have I done? Well, uh, you know, he's like, who's barbecue you've been eating? <laughs> Add uh, any tainted supplements. And I'm just like, man, you know, I don't even really take anything right now because I'm cutting weight. I don't take nothing, you know? And um, I was just, it was just crazy because I knew that in the Tillam test get back, I didn't know what was going on. And I knew that the public was going to think automatically I couldn't make weight, I got hurt, or or I was dirty. Yeah. You know, I knew that it was just a horrible feeling, man. And, and you know, I was, it was killing me for a couple of days. And I'm just like, hitting, I'm like, where's my manager? I'm like, man, what can I tell the public? He's like, man, just don't say nothing. I'm like, bro, I gotta say something though. They're just, they're already you? hitting me with this. Huh? Was UFC advising you not to say anything at that time or what did you hear from the promotion at all? Yeah, uh yeah, yeah. Jeff uh Ke- uh was it, was it Keeney? 
is the guy that's over all the yeah. doping part of Joe Juju. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't say his last name really hard to pronounce. <laughs> um, yeah, but him, yeah, they, uh, Sean Shelby, I called him. I called Sean. I was like, because I got Sean's number. He told me to Kenner, me and him got cool. Sean liked me. He was like, anytime I need anything, hit him up. So I was just like, I just called Sean, you know, Sean Shelby. And I was like, yo, bro, like, you got to tell me what's going on. He's like, look, man, um, you, because at, at the time I thought that I popped or something. They said like a, a farmer, farmer side or something or like, uh, it may it's like a, a estrogen blocker or something that right. people take to like balance out their uh I don't know <laughs> I really I really don't know I, I don't know anything about this kind of stuff but right. it's, they they explained to me something like that he's like he's like you haven't popped anything bro he's like you you're just on a marker right now we have a senior test to germinate it takes a couple weeks for me to get back we can't let you fight until they back because it's like liability reasons he's like but I'm gonna let you talk to uh, our doping agency guy, and he's gonna keep you updated on all this and everything that's going on. So the whole process, everybody was like, "Yo, you're it's like a week later, it's like your test finally made it to Germany. Take a week from the test, and it's like, hey, they just tested it. They're gonna send it back. Like three weeks later, they finally come back, and they're like, you know, and I was just telling the Sean and and the Jeff, I was like, um, man, can it just be that I'm genetically like this, you know? And it was like, it has been very rare cases that people have just been born with high testosterone and we haven't tested beast. <laughs> yeah man that's what i'm saying like uh god made men and he made women and then he made my wife you know and that's just that's just a joke <laughs> but, and, uh, uh, so jeff novitzi uh, calls you and he lets you know okay your your test is actually clean but you've got off the charge testosterone yeah he takes me in the message and i actually screenshot it on Twitter and stuff because I just let people know it was Donna Marcy Lana Loney she has a hard last name too and um, she was like hey Jeff just sent me this Uh, you saw your test has come back from Germany and you are just a natural freak man and you're all good (laughs) and clear to fight we're uh, sending these results to Sean right now and they're going to get you on a card soon and that, that that's oh, got to be oh, Joe, that's got to be a great pickup line for you, bro. I mean, you just got to be like, hey, you know, I, I got it certified right here from the UFC, <laughs> I'm girl. Beast. I'm a beast. Ain't nobody else like me. I mean, that's yeah, got to be a yeah, good pickup, yeah. right? Well, you're married, right? right? Do y'all have any kids? No, we don't. Not yet. Out there no, trying to make some it. beast babies. <laughs> yeah, man, we might get about some triplets probably or something the first try. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> I like it, man. Hey, it gives you something to aim for, man. Triplets mm-hmm. in the first one. There you go. One shot, one kill Listen, from Brock Weaver. Little monkey. Mama is, mama little is monkey. not trying to fool around yeah, with I, carrying I think your wife is on the other shit. line, and she's saying, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, man. We got, we, got, we got 14 dogs and two cats. So, I mean, oh, we, got a, we all got a farm. <laughs> you got an animal farm out there. No kidding. Yeah. What? Did you have all them? Where all the dogs come from? You or the wife? Did you like have a blended family of dogs? <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, my, my my wife, man, and she come with a miniature Doberman, and we picked up a half husky puppy died on the street, and then we found two pit half pit bull puppies brothers on the street and adopted them, and and then we got a hound dog. I got bought her a hound dog for her birthday, a birthday, a uh, Walker, big Walker. I'm a big bloodline of coon hunting. That coon hunting's big around here. I don't know if y'all know anything about coon hunting, but uh-huh. we love it. We go out there and we uh, we set them dogs loose in the woods. And now my coon dog, we found another coon dog in the woods as we was coon hunting. And rescued <laughs> her and bred them two coon dogs, and now they got puppies. So, Dude, you are uh, one we, of a kind. Like Steve this Irwin is, from, yeah. uh, from Alabama. <laughs> yeah. This is too yeah. much. So you, you're fighting now. You got to fight on the books. When's the next fight? Where is it? February 15th, Rio Rancho, New Mexico. Right. Rodrigo Cazula Vargas. Do you scout your opponent, or you just you just concentrate on your own game? I watch when as soon as they tell me their name, I watch the videos once, and then I know I know them. You know, um, I, I learned a long time ago. A dude told me, and I it become uh, pretty 
it made good sense. He said, uh, don't watch your opponent too much. Don't game plan on their videos too much because you will secretly become a fan of theirs. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you, and I caught myself doing that a couple of times. So I get too worried about what they're going to do when I get in there and not worry about what I do now. So these, you know, these last probably like eight or nine fights, I just watch the video. I watch that highlight. If they got a highlight video, I watch it. All right, I know what you do good. And that's the only thing I see. So I know what I got to do now. I know I see I see your best. And uh, I'm going to do me. I'm going to come at you 100 miles per hour. I'm going to fight off instinct. And uh, we're going to get in a fight, you know. And I know anything can happen in that fight. It's 50-50 when the bell rings. But I know one thing. When they fight me, they got to go to war, you know. They might yeah, win. Yeah. They gotta go to war. They ain't gonna want to fight Brock Weaver a uh, second time. You talk a lot of trash, though, don't you? I do talk a lot yeah. of trash in the fight. I, I'm before uh, the fight, I'm, in the fight. My, at, when I'm talking in there, it makes me breathe. It makes me calm. It makes it like a video game to me. If I ain't talking, then and then, then something's wrong. I'm something's happening. You know, like it, <laughs> um, you know, it was something. I don't know, but. I'm pretty much talking every fight from like my second or third fight. I think the first one, like I said, I was way too scared. I was about to do to myself. <laughs> don't, yeah. You know, keep talking. Well, we don't do want that. you to do to in, in the octagon. Well, you got a ton yeah, of fans, yeah, man. Yeah, you, you got a ton of fans. They're all commenting on here. Scalp them, War Brock. You're a legend in the making. Hands down, going to be the greatest from uh, one of you guys on here. I'm sure. You know, uh, for for anyone who's never seen you fight, man, you got a fight coming up. Why should they tune in and not overlook Brock Weaver? Why should they tune in, man? Um, you know, the the energy I'm going to bring, the hype I'm going to bring, the walkout. I mean, you know, uh, I watch a lot of WWE, man. If anybody likes that, you yes. know, I'm, All I, right. I'm, uh, me and my, me and my grandpa and my uncle, we, we grew up watching WWE, man. We still watch it. And, uh, nice. after fighting, after fighting, you know, I'm going to throw the face paint, throw the, the moccasin. And I'm going WWE, and I might have to ask five Brock Lesnar, you know. But <laughs> it's fun showing who the real Brock is, you know. But, you know, pe- people going to watch me because, you know, my personality, my charisma, the energy, the hype I'm going to bring, and uh, the wars. I mean, like I said, when you fight Brock Weaver, you got to go to war, and you ain't going to want to fight me the second time. And uh, February 15th, you know, everybody's going to tune in. ESPN Plus is cheap, $7 a month. It's not a pay-per-view. And I think they got me on the main card. You know, they got me out here in, uh, in New Mexico, which is uh, over on his turf, too, a little bit. But it's, it's by the Apache Reservation. I was going to say, you might have some people and, around uh, there. I'm going to have some people around there. They already hit me up. The Apaches, uh, they, they're going to be with me 100. So we're going to get in there and throw in, throw in the war drums, and uh, we're going to get everybody hyped up, see if we can get our spiritual ancestors roaming around there. And, uh <laughs> Dude's butt, man. Get this dumb. Yeah, that's and, uh, not even fair. Keep climbing. <laughs> that's not even fair. You gotta bring in your answers. Are they gonna? Is the UFC gonna allow you to come out in your cultural garb this time? I know there was an issue uh, previously. You gonna be the able contender to? Contender wouldn't. But Sean, Sean said I could come out with a couple things on. Okay. Uh, okay. The contender, the contender, the, the contender, let me take it off. But uh, Sean, Sean said uh, I could. That Reebok uh, was gonna allow me to wear a couple things. Nice. So, All right. right. Well, looking we, we forward to, to it. A little, we get to be a little flashy, a little characteristic, you know. Looking forward to you it. You bringing man. your boy G out? I know your your rap friend, um, who's who's your hype man. Is is he going to join you? Oh this yeah. Time? Oh yeah, he'll be there, man. My pocket knife. Ah. <laughs> nice, man. Well, Brock, before we say goodbye to you, man, you mentioned you grew up watching WWE. Who was your favorite wrestler? Who was my favorite? Yeah. Man, I mean, if you if you can smell what the Rock is cooking, the I Rock. Mean, that, that was my man, man. That's that you. was my man, and I was so jealous to, to see him get to him, you know, Jorge and all them to get to meet this mm-hmm. dude, and, and him get to wrap the belt. I was like, man, that's got that should have been me. But everything happens for a reason, man. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe you know, I get my second favorite wrestler in there to wrap to wrap that belt around me, or maybe another belt. You know, uh, who knows. Uh, um, I might bring in that 165 weight class one day right. if, if I get Dana to like get Dana to smile at me a little bit more, you know, and maybe 
I can get my second favorite wrestler, of the uh, steam to come from the top with the belt <laughs> coming down with the rope and wrap it around me, you know, something like that, I think. And, and then I like let it. me get on the rope and take me back out. I oh, like it. Like that's you, a, that's so. a great not, idea. Man. I have that's no a great idea, idea who that person is. Well, I see. I asked that because a little bit later in the show, we're going to introduce. Uh, CZ never grew up watching pro wrestling. I, I did, grew up pro watching. I just stopped. Watching. So I, I have, I'm going to introduce her to pro wrestling. So we're going to start some lessons with her. Uh, if you have her go back and watch anyone, who would you recommend her watch as far as pro wrestling? If I recommend her watching anybody? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you said The Rock. That's, that, that's, that, it, it, yeah, but I would say that to really get introduced into this and the show really – Everybody knows the rock. You know what the rock brings to it. But I would say go watch Ric Flair or go watch. Yep. Woo! Uh, exactly. Yeah. He he bring he brought he brought a lot of pro rap. He brought it in really when I was started. He got me hype in the wrestling. I would say Ric Flair or um, uh, Triple H. I mean, it, you know, there's a, there's a lot of them now, man. There's so there's so many wrestlers. Uh, I could sit here and name them all night, but <laughs> I like I like Ric Flair, man, or, or Hulk Hogan, or mm-hmm. you know, uh, the the greatest of all time. Though wasn't even in my favorite. You know, the greatest of all time is Mike Goldberg. He's the greatest. Nobody could beat Goldberg. He took the whole NWO on. So I mean, <laughs> there's, there's plenty, but. I can sit here and talk about pro wrestling all night. Oh, but he says it right, too. He says one wrestling. Day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, wrestling. I'm from Alabama, man. We put A's and everything. We wrestle. <laughs> and and uh, real quick, what do you think about Deontay Wilder, kind of a hometown guy for you guys there in Alabama, fighting for that heavyweight strap? <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, I like I like Deontay. You know, we Alabama all the way, road tide, no matter what. Don't, be, don't ever get on his state war eagle. So we know that, you know, but, uh, I, I, you know, I really, I really like Tyson Fury too. Cause I love, I love like a box and I had Tyson Fury the first fight. And I actually had Tyson Fury winning the fight even with the knockdowns, but I don't think Tyson Fury watching his last fight and how he's been in the wrestling and how he's been doing this and making, and, and, you know, trying to train MMA. I think he's getting a little distracted and I think he's getting a little sidetracked. And uh, I don't think he can go another 12 rounds. I don't think he's got the knockout power to stop Wilder. And Wilder is freaking. We just seen what he did to Ortiz again. So I don't think Tyson can last 12 rounds with him again. I don't think he can do that again. I think uh, Wilder knows him now and is eventually going to catch him again. I believe Tyson will win most of the fight until he gets caught. That there sounds go. about right. That you sounds know. about right. You know, I actually had a quick question. Um, did you have any formal martial arts training, or is it just all primarily boxing? Where did where, where your game come from? Uh, I started off in boxing, like I said, but I'm a, I'm a second strike brown belt in jiu-jitsu, too. And, uh, man, I, I learned to wrestle in the school bathrooms where, you know, hey, man, I can drop you. So, I mean, you know. <laughs> Friends, do you have in the school bathrooms? Like, like, hey, you know, I'm gonna I'm go knock my friend out. I mean, We're gonna have some pizza afterwards. Yeah. Walk yeah, out, dogs. yeah, that's how it is. That's I'm telling you, if you have any, we had any problems with our friends around here, we would draw the circle, go to the clay pit, draw the circle, all the boys would get around, we'd fight until one of us quit, and we'd get up, shake hands, and, and ask anybody else to have any more problems. They'd step in the circle and fight and shake hands. And, We'll is, that, is that not the best night. way to solve your problems? I mean, there you go. Hey, you, I'm, all about, I'm all about it. That's the only way. That's the only way, man. I'm about that. So. <laughs> I like it, man. Well, <laughs> Brock, thank you so much, man, for taking the time to join us. And uh, best of luck to you February 15th in New Mexico on ESPN. You can catch Brock Weaver throw down on the main card, and he's going to bring it, and he's going to be uh, representing his tribe and everything. So we're going to wait and see what you come out with what they allow you to come out with, but we can't wait to watch you go to work, man. Yes, sir, man. I can't wait. Right. Awesome. But, hey, before we let you go, is anybody you need to shout out, any sponsors, anybody around you you need to holler at? Man, I got so many sponsors I could put them on a bus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just named the, uh, man, uh, and still Nutrition, man. They've been with me. I just got another uh, nutrition uh, guys, too, man. We're gonna link up with Ann Steel, uh, Glaxon, uh, Sam Strange, and them guys, man. They they're gonna be taking care of me. 
with all my uh, Mobile local uh, the people to help me with my transmission, AA transmission, Joey Harrell transmission, uh, Clean East Mobile, man, they're getting, they're getting me down to 155. It's a lifestyle. Um, uh, Mako Tech mouth guards. Um, man, I got so many. Mobile cryotherapy. Uh, well, that's good. It's good to have yeah, a lot. I ain't got, I ain't got my list on me. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you, go. hey, you got to get Grandma back her money. Right. So Yeah, get, grand, get Grandma yeah, back her get, money. Man, I, I'll never, I'll never be able to do that. I don't care if I get Tom McGregor money. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, or way too much, man. We all owe our grandmothers way too much. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. We appreciate it, man. Can't wait to see you do work. Take care of yourself. Bye now. Yes, sir, man. Thank you. All right. See you later, bro. Thank you so much. There you go. UFC uh, beast. Beast yeah, off the charts kind like, of beast. Look, Derek Lewis, uh, he got a new beast in town. Black beasts. Yeah. With Derek Lewis and Brock Weaver, man, doing work. I get, I'm glad they, they approved saw usage of some of his garb to come out and everything. Yeah. I can't wait to see what he comes out and, and how he reps uh, the tribe and his people and everything. I think it's cool, too. I mean, when you see the Brazilian fighters, they do come out sometimes in, you know, their cultural, in their colors. And, yeah. So, yeah, I and think that's And came out and he yeah, uh, did some pop and lock, I right. guess, uh, you know, so from Zoolander. Nigeria, uh, yeah. Nigerian pop and lock. Hey, uh, the original pop and lock was on the mother continent, so that's definitely yeah. uh, Nigerian. <laughs> what are you talking about? Are you, are you saying that's not Connecticut? Um, <laughs> the, the Amish didn't pop and lock. Come I'm on. Certain not, no. All right, so let's uh, let's get to some uh, life lessons for CC here. Man. We're going into uh, naming. We're going to show CC a series of pictures, and she has to guess the name of the pro wrestler and in pro wrestling okay let me just educate you real quick in pro wrestling their wrestling. names are often called their gimmicks right mm -hmm. they oftentimes don't use their real made-up names the first one we're going to show you you know his real name but you more people know him by his gimmick name so right. we're so guessing we you're going to guess the gimmick All guess right. the name right. of the wrestlers that you see when they oh, pop up on the screen so let's go with number one here what who is this guy that's the rock. That's the rock. Look know, at it. You said it with chest. confidence. I know that chest. You know, oh, you, you know that chest. Them pecs are familiar. <laughs> I seem to. Be. Okay, so easy, right? Mm -hmm. And his, but his real name. Do you know his real name? Uh, Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne Johnson, right? Terrible wrestling name, but incredible, Dwayne. incredible guy. Who's this yeah. guy? This next guy here. Hulk Hogan. There you I go. Know, I know Hulk Hogan. You are two See, I for grew two. Up, well, when I was younger, I did watch wrestling. I just stopped when I was eight. Okay. <laughs> Had other things okay. to do. That, a lot of people do. They stopped doing it. Uh, and uh, Hulk Hogan's real name. Do you know his real name? Isn't it like Stacy Terry? Terry. Terry, Terry yeah. Bolia. Yeah. Right? Hulk Hogan. All right. That's, number that's three. Gonna be the, uh, Who is this guy? Is that The Undertaker? Look at you! Yeah. Come on, you're uh, three for three, and you were like, "Oh." But he usually wears all the things. So later in his Undertaker-ish like career, he starts. His, his characters off, right? evolved, but this is what he kind of looked like when, uh, he, uh, not too long after he first. I just remember he got WWE. beat by like some younger dude who's just, like bigger than he is. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That that is the synopsis of pro wrestling right there. All right, let's go to number four. Number four, who is this cat? Hmm. Who is this cat? He looks like a. I know this dude. That hair, uh, that is hey. that is feathered. That is lethal. Mm -mm. That He's is some fair faucet. Neon man. Uh, neon ultimate, man. Ultimate. Uh, oh, oh, you're close. You're close. Ultimate, not ultimate, ultimate fighter, neon man. Ultimate neon fighter. Uh, warrior. Ultimate warrior. Come on, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> four for four, dude. You are killing this. Like these are like ultimate. They were all on like ultimate, oh, ultimate neon fighter guy. He yes, has some you are little absolutely. draws on though. Like it's like the <laughs> early spanks. Like, what are you doing, man? You'll find put them, that the neon spanks on the you. The manlier the sport, the smaller the spanks for for men. Uh, out you know, there, MMA. Like, out there, like. Hugging dudes and draws, like what's there you go. going yeah, on? They're, they're hugging each other and do jujitsu and draws. There you go. <laughs> uh, now we, the only female on this list. Who, who is this lady? Uh, uh, 
uh, one of the greatest of all time. Something to do with a bag of balloons. <laughs> <laughs> the, the balloon lady? Is that what lady, we call um, her up? <laughs> memory princess. Memory uh, that is a great name. I don't know. If you if you do uh, like uh, rock or anything like that, that's a great band name. Right. Memory Princess. Yeah, that I got nothing. Okay, that is Trish Stratus. I, she would send you to. She didn't have a to, name? That's she, her actual name. She didn't have like a, you Trish know, Stratus. a oh. play name or something like a that. A playmate name? Yeah. No, or no, like, no. She, she was an athletic name? model and uh, like a fitness model. Oh, who became a wrestler okay. and then then became one of the greatest of all time Good as far as wrestling is concerned uh but yes i can see where you might get caught up with the uh, her well, stripper name was diamond uh, certainly cinnamon was, yes cinnamon gold all right who is this uh nice looking gentleman here? Uh, I, I, <laughs> he who wears a big ass chain that's kind of rampages you know yeah kind that would have been a good just, name, huh? Weren't there like people called like Junkyard Dog or something like oh, that? Yeah, you know who that is. No, is that really who that is? That is Junkyard so, Dog. Only because it's just got the chain on it. She's lying. Like, she I'm Googled it. Weren't there people called I thought junkyard it was a tag dog? team. It was a, a Junkyard Dog. I thought it was, was a tag I team? told you, I watched this. Okay. I went so you, to the Civic you got, Center you got junkyard and dog. I've seen this stuff in you person. Got, no, you're doing great. The only one you haven't really gotten is uh, Trish Stratus and mm -mm. Ultimate Neon Fighter guy. I didn't see Bouncy Boots. All right, let's, let's see uh, the next one here. Who is our number seven? Is that the guy from Guardians of the Galaxy, the one who's like the stone? That absolutely is not. The... No, but that's what he looks like. He looks like the actual real stone person. Who's it? Uh, the who, stone. Who does? Yeah, Drax. The Rock. Oh, Drax. Drax, Drax yes, is not a stone. Like, what, is, what are you talking about? No. There, Did you watch the not, same movie? I maybe watched? it's not Guardian of the Galaxy. Is it like Fantastic Four or something? Somebody yes. has made a stone. Fantastic Four. There that's is. What it looked like. They call him the Thing. Yeah, he looks like the um, Thing. Is, is that a heart hanging out of his chest? Yep. Yeah. Those things are worms coming out of his mouth, and this he is an actual see a gimmick. Doctor. Yeah, he this... see somebody. Maybe they should send him to. Do Germany. they have vegan worms? Yeah, you know, they should send him with Brock's um, sample, like wherever you saw to send this thing in Germany and check <laughs> uh, this thing out. He's got an extra sauce no from worms. I don't know who that is. Uh, this is a that. gentleman called the Boogeyman. Yeah, he yeah. Is. There you go. He looks like. And the he's coming man. to get you. Mm -hmm. uh, I got, I got okay, so, book so man proof in my crib, so come if you want to. <laughs> uh, number eight. This is one of the shortest lived gimmicks in it WWE history. Looks like a penguin. I can't see. Can you, can you put a, pull it up on yours? Um, can you see looking, number? Yeah, it looks like a human penguin. <laughs> a human penguin. Mm -hmm. It's a bullhead on top of it. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a bull. <laughs> is it bullhead? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great guess. It looks like a penguin. We need a glasses sponsor. I That's do. What we need. I have some glasses. I got some yeah, new well, glasses. It's all that vegan pizza you eat. Uh, that is Mantar. Mantar. <laughs> These are great gimmicks, though. Where's the man part? The legs. Uh, what do you mean, where's the oh, man like part? Oh, like human? Yeah, he's uh, like a minotaur. <laughs> but he's a mantar. You know. <laughs> no, what are you, no. you said, where's the human part? The legs on the guy? No, is, is yes, the man is human, Good but, Lord. like, and it's nothing that looks good. Oh, my gosh. All right, let's move on. Number nine. Who is? <laughs> I can't believe I found that picture. That's somebody in um, a peacock <laughs> and um, bird costume. Yes. What, what is his name? Highway to the bird nest. Uh, that would be a good finishing yeah, move. Uh, mm -mm. His name is Guy. <laughs> guy who didn't have a career very His long. His name is Guy. That is Guy. You know what? Actually, this this dude was on The Masked Singer. Mm -hmm. like, just like that with that costume on. Yep. Yeah, I got nothing. This is the gobbledygooker. <laughs> gobbledygooker. Is that a real name? A real name. A real gimmick. Ooh, it's got I'm not saying how long these gimmicks lasted at WWF. I'm just saying and they were. And he's got quite a waddle. 
He's got That's quite. That's impressive. Oh, yeah, that is an impressive waddle. That's what all the girls look for. Yeah. An impressive waddle. Look at the waddle on that guy. Look at the waddle on that fool. All right, our last one here, probably one of the most famous busts in WWF history. Who is this guy? Very shiny. Like a holiday. Look at that guy. Um, He's got a Stormtrooper helmet on. Uh, that, that's very Hannibal Lecter-ish. Very, but he has no shirt. Very Do you remember this chest? If you know The Rock, then you got to know this chest. Not at all. Um, that is, you know, a serious lack of chest hair, too. Is that going there, too? Very, he's very smooth. What do you think his name is? Smooth Trooper? Is, Smooth, tr- smooth, smooth trooper. Smooth trooper. Yeah, man, I like it. It's pretty close. Uh, the shock master. Oh my god! I wonder is that thing made out of, like styrofoam and they just bedazzled it? They bedazzled the hell out of that. Can and I just noticed he is one? very smooth for a big guy. He is. I think he waxed. He's smooth for a big guy. He's got a like a fur yeah. vest on, but he's otherwise Boots very smooth. With the no fur. chest hair, no, Mm-mm. no nothing. Wow, that's crazy. That is. There you go. The Shockmaster. The so Shockmaster. Now, now you know what gimmicks are. You okay. have a gimmick in wrestling, right? All right. Hulk Hogan was a gimmick. He was, his gimmick was tearing was his shirt big, off, right? Well, he was six yeah. foot eight and, you know, you know, I mean, 300 pounds yeah. in his prime. That you know, he was kind of the big. surfer guy from California, but mm-hmm. he was all American and fought for truth and justice in the American way. Who was his nemesis? Was Your it wife. Roddy, Roddy mm-hmm. Piper? Who was he? He had a few. Andre nemesis? the Giant. Remember? Hey, gimmick name. Some of them are straightforward. Andre He's a giant. giant. So I let's just call him a giant. Andre the Giant story, man. That was fascinating. Did you see that story? Uh, I saw parts of it. Ooh, there have been a few of them. Train wreck. It's a, it's a sad, yeah. sad story. It is sad. Kind of sad story. But, okay, last couple of minutes here. Uh, let's talk about Canelo and his potential matchup. Uh, Canelo, of course, uh, now that Floyd is retired, well, somewhat. He might be coming back in some capacity. So, yeah. He's taking over May 2nd mm-hmm. as one of his fight dates. The other one being Mexican Independent Weekend, Independence Weekend. The opponent he's floating around and his team is floating around right now is Billy Joe Saunders. Man, fight that fool tomorrow. After the way that Billy Joe Saunders fought uh, here in Vegas most recently. Like, yeah, make that fight. Exactly. Is this a good fight, though? Not for Canelo. I mean, what what's he at this point, though? If he's not fighting uh, Demetrius Andrade, then like you know, it don't matter. Right. So just line them all up. He's got what eight more fights to go under the zone, and I think that's what they're trying to do is to preserve him a little bit so he finishes up and he gets his full three hundred and sixty-five million. Because you know how are you gonna live off a of thirty million? But, is, but do you think this is a fight that even DAZN could be happy with? Because I don't see this pushing subscriptions. Well, it's an international fight, so you can span a couple of continents actually that way. So yeah, I I can see it being appealing. Mm. Listen, DAZN wants that Triple G trilogy. Yep. That's what they want. So no, they're not thrilled with it, but they can sell this fight. Mm. Now, and actually, That's I a thought tough I sell. saw that Gennady, actually, they had just um, That's a tough sell. Yeah. Especially Billy Joe, well, hasn't, he hasn't looked good. Yeah. Uh, he has no power. He is not going to damage Canelo at all. Nah. And, and I think this is another just easy kind of belt grab for Canelo. That's all. Yeah. He's out here belt snatching. Yeah, he's snatching souls, snatching belts. Snatching steak. But that's kind of the fight that he's... I hate it because he's promoting it the way he promoted the Sergey Kovalev. Mm-hmm. This is a great fight. This is the it's best history fight. History in the and making. This is the the hardest opponent, you know, right. uh, I could possibly face when it's anything. But Man. these are mm-hmm. the, you talk about cherry picking. We're starting to get into that with Skin with is Canelo. To be the pits. <laughs> but you got to beat the guys that they put in front of you. Right. I mean. Right. So there you go. I mean, so that's the one that's being floated you around. I feel like the zone kind of owes him a little bit because of making all of this. him wait. On uh, that last card, and you know he was really pissed off about it, and so now I want one of these freebies. Call his shots. For I want. A I want. Bit. I want one for free. I want me a okay. tomato can. And well, he's not a tomato can. He's no, a, he's not a tomato can, can, but there's no way this goes any other way than what we think. It yeah, is. nah, nah. Hang on, be having him. So there you go. That's our show for this evening. Thank you so much, Brock Weaver. Mm. Tuning in, always entertaining. He's a beast among men, apparently. Uh, and he fights February 15th 
ESPN Plus for the I'm UFC. Have some more of this pizza in one week. Uh, next week, uh, I'll say we'll go ahead and say it. Matt Brown, yeah, the immortal Matt yes. Brown is going to be joining immortal. us on the show. We're going to talk to him a little bit about his uh, happy comeback fight and and uh, all the good things that he's doing. So everyone out there, thank you so much for all your comments, your likes, your shares on Facebook and everything we're doing, all your subscri- uh, subscribers, I guess, on YouTube and everything for everything else. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey. Happy. Thank you, uh, CC, for vegetarian pizza. And what's the name yeah. of the pizza place again? Pizza 108. Pizza 108, brand new here in Las Vegas, I think. Brand new? I don't know. I don't know if they're brand new or not. So, but it's pretty good. So for Quant 5.9, I'm Jeremy Long. She's the Sportsnista. We'll see you next week. Bye.